Hey everyone, JT from Your Bike Escape here, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at this sleek, lightweight, gravel edition Roadster V2. So let's get into it. Before we revisit the review on the Roadster V2, but this time with the Gravel Edition, I just wanna ask everyone a couple quick favors. If you are looking to purchase any Ride One Up e-bike, please consider using the links down in the description. All purchases made through those links help directly support e-bike escape, help us continue to make content like this one. Also linked down in the description, we'll have links to our e-bike accessories list, top e-bikes brands page and our e-bikes discounts code page. The discounts code page is a good page to keep an eye on if you are looking to purchase a Roadster V2 as they frequent that page and you can save yourself a little bit of money. Also a new link that we'll have linked down in the description is going to be to our e-bike escape store where we've kind of started to collect data um, from other websites on what are some of the most popularly sold items. We're going to start adding to that store as well as we found some really high-end nice products from a company called Bike Case, which is actually based here in Wisconsin. So you can frequent that store if you're looking for maybe some ideas and some accessories. We're also running sales from time to time, so be sure to keep an eye out. All right, let's take an overview here of probably one of the nicest looking e-bikes. I am a little biased as my colors that I tend to like are gonna be more soft-spoken or hidden. And so this has kind of a matte gray paint job here as it goes across. And then you have these, of course, gum sidewall tires, as well as some knobby tread. We're gonna get into all of that, but that's what makes this the gravel edition is those knobby tires as well. Some other nuances and changes that we think are for the better on this bike. But the Roadster V2 is a review that we've done before but we have not reviewed the gravel edition. So we wanted to kind of revisit and show off this special edition bike that Ride One Up has come out with. One of the nice things about the Roadster frame here is that it comes in two frame sizes. It does not come in a step through. You only get a traditional bike style frame like you see here, but it does come in a small and large option. The small has a height range of five foot three to five foot eight with a 30.5 inch standover height. And the large has a five foot eight to six foot three height range and has a 33 inch standover height. I am a five foot eight rider with about a 29 inch inseam, but I do have a little bit of a longer torso, but I found that the reach here on the large is a lot better fitting for me, especially more comfort for say, a little bit longer rides like I tend to do. And this gravel edition is gonna work great on the gravel roads I have available to me here in Wisconsin. Be sure to pay attention at the end to some third person riding footage, we'll be able to get an idea of myself riding this bike. Like I said, five foot eight with about a 29 inch inseam. Along with those frame sizes, the Roadster V2 non-gravel edition is available in a couple different color options. We'll splash those on the screen now for you. But the gravel edition is again, only available in the matte with gum sidewall tires like you see here. There is one customizable option about the gravel edition besides the frame size. And that's gonna be your choice between the throttle version and the non-throttle version. So the throttle version of the Roadster V2 comes in at $13.95. And what that does is instead of it having this minimalist display here on the side, it has a king meter display, which has a built-in throttle. But this as seen here is comes in at $12.95 and this is the non-throttle version. I think if you're looking to purchase a bike of this style, the non-throttle version is going to be a much better choice. As well as like I showed before, you get that minimalist display there that really kind of helps you hide the fact that this is an e-bike. Uh, as a commenter once said about a previous e-bike is that this is an e-bike that doesn't identify as an e-bike as the battery is set up in this down tube here. It is removable from the bottom as there are some bolts, but it is not easily removable. So you will have to charge this battery while on the bike. Just a note about this bike is that if you are gonna say have to carry it up some stairs or something like that, it is a light e-bike. It comes in at about 33 pounds, has a weight capacity of 300 pounds for the rider. But if you are trying to say remove the battery or lock it up so that nobody can take it, the battery is not easily removable. So make sure to get yourself a good bike lock. We've got a lot of good recommendations on our e-bike accessories list and soon to be a area that we will have in our e-bike escape store where you can reference for some of the locks that we trust. Before we jump into the finer details here of the Ride One Up Roadster V2 Gravel Edition, we have a review on every Ride One Up model at this point. So if you are a person that is looking for an e-bike that's affordable and is value priced, but comes packed with features, Ride One Up is that brand to us. It says something that we have been reviewing Ride One Up e-bikes for almost three years now, and we continue to admire them. But just something to keep in mind, they are a trustworthy brand. They are someone who's been around for a long time. And one of the reasons we were super excited to get this gravel edition. 
So starting up here at the front, you'll notice we have the gum sidewall tires here. These are WTB Resolute tires. They are a 700C by 42. Now, I believe the website does say that you have two options for tires, and I think that might be via frame size, but they both come in at 700 by 42. The other ones are Continental brand. So recognizable brands, you're not getting any off-brand tires. These are good knobby tires. Like you said, they have knobs here for riding on gravel and giving you some of that grip. On my driveway here, riding it up and down, sometimes with some of the slicker, cityer oriented tires, I have maybe some problems. I can feel the bike sliding around. These gravel tires were pretty much gripped in. Coming down, you notice we have a quick release, which is nice for portability of this bike. And if you ever say get a flat, which, you know, gravel bikes riding on off-road terrain you might get. Over here on the side, one of the other changes with the Gravel Edition Roadster V2 is that you go from the rim brake, typically mounted up here, to you actually get mechanical disc brakes. These are Textro Aries mechanical disc brakes with a 160 mil rotor, and that is both front and rear. That's kind of a nice change. We really like the transition to disc brakes over rim brakes. There's nothing wrong with them, but there is a reason that a lot of brands for higher speeds and things like that are switching. They're just more responsive. Here you'll see we have some cable management here. Very slim amounts of cables on this e-bike as you only have the display. Again, no throttle, and you have your cables here. The cable for the rear brake comes down and disappears into the top tube, and then the display cable here disappears into the down tube kind of near the battery. The controller is tucked in nicely in there. On the front here, you'll notice we have a one-up badge. This says listed as a class three and established in 2018. This bike is capable of providing power past the 20 mile per hour point. Again, no throttle and a single speed. So you may have to put in some effort to get that if say you're going up a hill, but we'll, we'll be sure to put all of that to the test in our hill climb test, show you what this bike is capable of with myself, 225 pound rider on here. And then coming up here to the cockpit, you'll see it is a pretty slim cockpit. We have non-locking rubber grips. We have the minimalist display. We have the Tektro mechanical disc brake levers up here with built-in bell. These also do have some nice rubber here on the front of the grip. These are some of the nicer mechanical disc brake levers that we have used. And if you also notice too, they are the all black design, kind of adds extra touches to the uh, overall feel of this bike and color scheme. And then coming over to the right, again, nothing but a mechanical disc brake lever and non-locking grip. We'll go ahead and push this bike into the shade so we can see that display in just a minute. You have this slim one-up graphic here on the side of the top tube and then also underneath down here i don't know if you'll be able to see it but there is the word roadster on the down tube here as well as a couple bolts for maybe getting the battery in and out you'll notice there are no water bottle cages on any of these other tubes but on the seat down tube here there are two water bottle cages Come down here, we have some metal Welgo pedals, standard pedals. They do have some nice pegs on them. They may get worn out pretty quickly if you're riding gravel or if you wanna be clipped in. Be sure to reference our e-bike accessories list. We have some recommendations to some nice pedals with maybe some grippier pegs for maybe some rockier terrain. And then coming back from the pedal, you'll notice this Gates carbon belt drive system. It is a single speed, but what this allows you to do is almost have a maintenance-free experience. So the belt that comes standard on the Roadster V2, it is also a belt-driven model. It is not a Gates one, it is just another brand, but Gates is just kind of known the brand that has developed the carbon belt drive system. This belt with proper maintenance will last you 19,000 miles. I don't know how many sets of tires you will go through in that time or how many times you'll have to charge this e-bike, but that is a lot of miles to put on any e-bike. So it's pretty safe to say that the belt is not gonna be the item that wears out on this bike first. And the gearing we have here is a little bit different than what we see on the standard Roadster V2. This is a 63 front and 22 tooth rear, whereas the standard Roadster V2 comes with a 64 front and a 20 tooth rear. So what that should allow you to do is be able to start out with a little bit less required torque from your legs as they figure that when you're gonna be riding on gravel and other roads like that, you're not gonna need that overall top speed. You're just gonna need to be able to say start from slower speeds. Here's a look at the cable, one of the few on this bike. This is the motor cable, it runs down here along and goes in up under down there, up into the down tube. And then here you'll notice too on this rear chain stay, you have these two bolts. Why that's there is that the belt, unlike a chain, does not come apart. So if you are to replace the belt, you need to unbolt this and separate the frame a little bit to be able to get the belt on and off if you had any issues. You'll also notice here we have these bolts. And what that allows you to do is when you loosen the 
nuts here for the motor instead of yanking on it you have an allen bolt on each side that you can kind of adjust evenly to get that rear wheel as straight in these rear stays as possible but like we said the belt will not be requiring much maintenance maybe a little bit of tensioning here and there and some cleaning if say you're riding in some thick mud but other than that it should be good to go for a long time and then here's a look at the motor on the roadster v2 so this is a 350 watt nominal 500 watt peak motor it this bike does come equipped with a 36 volt system not a 48 volt system so a little bit lower but i did notice riding this bike around on some of our hills and terrain i have here that it is capable of getting me up a hill i'm curious to see how this bike performs once we get it up our hill climb test and then coming around over here here's a look at the tetro aries mechanical disc brake in the rear with 160 mil rear rotor there is a look at the bolt for this side if you had to say help straighten the motor matching well go pedal Couple other quick things to call out while we are down here on this side. Here is a look at my custom kickstand. The Roadster V2 does not come with a kickstand. So it is something you either need to perch separately, maybe one that mounts to the chainstay, or have a nice custom built one like I have. Here's a look at the charging port for the charger here. It simply twists open and out of the way and you have your single plug there. Plug in the battery. And while we're all down here, I wanted to talk about the pedal sensor. So some of you may be afraid that this bike is a single speed and that pedaling is gonna be quite a effort to get going and everything like that. But I think Ride One Up really thought of that because the sensor that's on this bike is extremely sensitive. You're talking maybe a half pedal, just a little bit of movement and the, the motor definitely kicks in and provides power very quickly. So it is not that big of a concern as I actually thought it was gonna be riding this bike. So I'll be sure to try and talk about that a little bit more when we're actually in the third person riding footage. And then working our way up, here's a look at the saddle. It's listed as a comfort groove. I do not know what the brand is. It's a very soft seat. It has a very sleek road bike style shape, which is kind of fitting for the frame design. You could fit another seat to this bike, but pedaling is gonna be a little bit more difficult if say you get one of those like large seats. We think this seat is pretty good, but if you want some other recommendations, be sure to reference our e-bike accessories list, or even like I said soon, our e-bike store. All right, let's go ahead and push this bike and use my custom kickstand to get us into some shade so we can run through the display real quick. All right, now that we're in the shade, let's go ahead and turn the Roadster on. There you go. Here's a look at this minimalist display. Like I said, there are two e-bike options. One has a throttle. This is the minimalist display. We really think that this fits the ethos of the Gravel V2 here pretty well. Let's run through the settings on the display. So to start out, you have a power button on top, you have an M button right here, and then you have an up and down arrow. I know they're gonna be a little difficult to see. To cycle through all of the settings for the display, you simply push the M button here. Starting out, obviously front and center, we have the miles per hour. Lower, we have the odometer, we have battery, which is done by bars here. And then at the top, you'll notice we have pedal assist. You simply cycle through by pushing the up and down arrows, zero to five. When you push the M button here, you'll cycle through some other options. We have a total trip time. These are some settings in here, or some. these are some recorded data here. We have average speed, max speed, and then your total trip that you've traveled and back to your odometer miles per hour. Also, if you hold the up button, you will turn on the headlights. There is not a headlight on this bike or on the rear. So there are no lights to turn on, but it is nice to see that that is a function they could upgrade in the future. The display does dim. And if you hold the down button, the bike will actually go into walk mode. You notice a person with a bike come up on the screen and the bike will try and take off. Just be mindful of that as that can, uh, when you're on a custom nice kickstand like this, you could potentially uh, throw the bike off. So just be careful. And then one of the other settings that this display has is advanced settings. But in order to get into those, you actually need to turn the display off. And then within the first 10 seconds of turning the bike on, you then need to hold the M button for 10 seconds. Really, I found it to be just a few. And here you'll get into the advanced settings. Let's go ahead and run through these real quick. We have exit there at the top, units, which is for miles per hour, kilometers an hour, wheel, you can change the wheel size. It's currently set to 700C for these gravel tires. Then you have password. So what you can do is you can go in there and you can actually set a password that you'll have to enter every time you turn the bike on. So while the bike may not have keys or ignition or the ability to take the battery out, it does have the ability to be locked. So you can only turn the bike or really ride the bike with it on having a password. Let's go ahead and get back into the advanced settings. After password, we have auto off. You can set for how long the bike will sit on before it automatically shuts itself off. We have speed. You can set the overall speed limit of the bike. It is currently turned almost all the way up. We're just gonna go ahead and crank that. I don't really think uh, my legs are gonna be able to carry us to 
70 kilometers an hour, but we'll be certain to put that to the test in our first person riding footage. Here we have battery. So this kind of gives you uh, some battery information. I believe that is at the bottom, there's gonna be number of charges, current battery voltage and battery percentage. I think once you ride the bike, we'll get an idea. Then you have info, you can tell maybe some firmware information here, if maybe you're having some troubleshooting issues and then reset you. So if you accidentally change a setting in here, you can reset everything back to default. And then to exit, you simply go all the way back up to the exit. And that pretty much wraps up the display. I know this is typically the part of the video where we will remove the battery and show you how that all goes in and out. But like we said on the Roadster V2 Gravel Edition and really the Roadster V2, the battery is not easily removable but, it, removable, but it is removable if it needs to be, say there's an issue or something like that. So I was gonna show you that real quick, flip it over um, and just kind of talk about the size of it real quick before we throw it to the riding footage. In order to do that though, I enlisted the help of some products that we really like here. These are the handlebar jacks. So what they do is they mount simply right onto your handlebar here. And if you say had a bigger display or something else, they have make spacers. So you get it. They, these, however, will work perfect for this bike. And then I also put on the seat cover so I don't mar up the seat at all. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and back up, set you guys on the tripod here, and I'm gonna flip the bike over and then I'll give you guys a close up look. So there we go. Flip it over, use the handlebars as one mount and the seat as the other. And there we go, now we have the, the bike flipped upside down. Maybe if you wanted to um, replace a wheel, get the rear wheel off with the motor in or something like that, maybe align the chain, this would be a great way to do that. But here we go, here's a look at the plate on the bottom. So it has some screws here on the sides that you would take out on both sides, this cap would come off. And then somewhere in here, you're gonna find your controller and your battery all housed in there. So like I said, it is removable. There's a couple more screws here on the down tube. Here's a much better look at the word Roadster on the down tube, but that would allow you to get the battery out. So if you had any problems and needed to say replace it. And again, the size of the battery in the Roadster V2 is a seven amp hour battery. So not a large battery, but it is meant to complement pedaling and not really be used with throttle, which is pretty much how we think single speed bikes like this should be ridden. And really, if you're buying a bike of this type, that's pretty much what you're going to enjoy. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this bike back over, and then I'm gonna take it to our neighborhood where I will run through all the various pedal assists, and I'll bring it back to our hill climb test and show you what the 350 watt motor on this bike is capable of. And maybe I'll find some gravel along the way. All right, here we are at the pedaling and riding portion to just kind of give you guys an idea of how the e-bike feels. Uh, via a like neighborhood pedaling or flat roads. And then after this, we're gonna do the hill test, which I know on this bike, I'm actually excited to try it as well to, to see what, what this motor is capable of. So for this test, obviously there's no throttle. So it's strictly gonna be running through the various pedal assists. It's also a little different because it's only a single gear. So the only thing I'm gonna be calling out is gonna be the pedal assist levels. One thing about this bike is that it's a little tall, um, but I'm comfortable on it, but trying to give you guys the video footage here, I'm standing off to the side of it and I'll hop on real quick before we go. But this bike is listed on the website as having a very sensitive um, cadence sensor in the pedals down there. And I do have to say that actually, I thought that was maybe some marketing, you know, spiel there, but it's really not. This bike does have a very sensitive sensor, a little bit of turning and the pretty much the motor powers on. So it is kind of a nice thing that Ride One Up put on this bike as it kind of takes place of some of the delay we tend to see sometimes when you're providing power to get the motor going. All right, with that out of the way, I'm gonna start in pedal assist level one here on the display. The display pedal assist are here at the top, I'll call out as I shift through them. The battery is fully charged. Uh, yeah, let's hop on and see what this bike is capable of. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, I mean, I barely touched the pedals and it was already providing some power there. So here we go, pedal assist level one. And yeah, just working up. It's a pretty nice, easy cadence. Again, being a single speed, maybe a little bit of a struggle to get going, but once you're going, the motor's providing power, really not that big of a deal. It feels pretty smooth. Go ahead and jump onto the proper side of the road here. And then something else worth calling out about this bike too is that we know we said earlier that it's available with this minimalist display or the other display that has the throttle. I was saying earlier that it kind of fits the ethos of the bike to have the minimalist display. But the other thing to keep in mind is that if you do have the throttle display uh, and the ability to use a throttle, this is only a 36 volt, seven amp hour system. So it's going to kind of go through that battery pretty quickly. So to help the battery kind of be elongated and not entice you per se to uh, use the throttle, getting this one is kind of nice. Again, it's a, this is a pretty easy cadence. 
Display on the left is reading 14. GPS display is reading about 11 miles an hour in pedal assist level one. Kick up to pedal assist level two. Felt the motor kick up a little bit more. 13 miles an hour, 14 miles an hour, 15 on the display on the right and left actually. 16 on the GPS. There we go. Give it a little bit more. Pedal assist level three. Trying to maintain a similar cadence here. So 17 on the GPS and yeah, it's providing a good amount of assistance here, 18. My legs are, I don't know, maybe starting to feel a little ghost pedally. Just where I can feel that I'm not providing much effort. 17, 18, pedal assist level four here, 19. Trying to maintain that cadence when there's less resistance because the motor's taking over is a little difficult, but there we go, 20. I mean, that's a class two e-bike right there. Pedal assist up to level 20. And there you go, it's gonna keep providing power. 21, here's this turn here. And then it's gonna drop down because it's a little bit of an uphill. And then after we get around this turn up here, I'll kick it into pedal assist level five and we'll see what this bike is capable of with giving it all of my effort to, to try and see what's done. There we go. There we go, a little bit of gravel on the road, not worried with these tires. All right, here we go, pedal assist level five. And here we go, I'm giving it a little bit more effort with my legs than I was before. Let's see what we can get to, 22, 23, 24. I mean, this is a pretty fast cadence, but the motor is really assisting. 26, I'd say probably about 26. Then we get into this little bit of a downhill. So i see about 26 on flat ground, providing a good amount of power for a burst there. And looking at the battery percentage there, I haven't used any battery, which is pretty, pretty nice to see. I mean, again, seven amp hour battery, pretty small. But if you're just using it sparingly, maybe kicking up the pedal assist to say, get up a little hill or an incline, such as this one here. I know it's probably not gonna show up on camera, but the motor is pretty much pulling me up with me just providing a little bit of effort. And you can make that battery, of course, go longer by turning down your pedal assist to say level two and providing a little bit more power and still being able to maintain that speed up the hill. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up. This is a pretty easy, oh, no, up. Oh, I was wrong. Got to turn off pedal assist. What is this bike capable of if you do inevitably get a little too happy in pedal assist level five and run out of battery. What are the characteristics of this bike for pedaling here? Um, this is a pretty flat section here. So not a lot of effort on the legs, obviously no motor power, no assistance. And 13, 14 miles an hour, starting out on a single speed on an uphill is without battery power is gonna be very difficult. So like all electric e-bikes, you're gonna have extra weight to get up a hill if you do not have battery power. But worth keeping in mind is that this bike does only weigh 33 pounds, uh, as you saw it completely assembled. So it's not gonna take a whole lot of effort uh, compared to some 50, 60, 70 pound e-bikes. The review, so this is a little bit of an uphill here, but once you're already going, you may have to provide a little bit more power, but I imagine anybody that buys a bike such as the Roadster V2 or even this gravel edition, you're kind of prepared to provide power. You're not looking for uh, an easier riding bike. So yeah, it's kind of nice. So up here, it's actually a little bit of a, a little bit of an off-road path that I'm gonna jump onto with the bike. Just kind of see, see what its characteristics are off-road. We'll go into pedal assist level two and just see what it's capable of, or three there. So again, a little bit of power needed to just start out. And yeah, I have, hopefully this is not too bouncy, but I mean, these tires, they're basically little mountain bike tires. So they definitely provide grip where some city tires when you try and turn on roads, gravel and grass roads like this would uh, slip around. These definitely have a good amount of grab to them. And the WTB tires that are on here do have a history of being used in gravel bikes. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up the pedaling portion. Let's go ahead and throw this over to myself in front of the hill and see what this bike is capable of with those five levels of pedal assist up our steep hill climb test. All right, here we are at the hill climb test with the Roadster V2 Gravel Edition. Now, I have never ridden a single speed uh, belt drive bike up this hill, so I'm curious to see what it is capable of uh, and if it even makes it, to be honest. I mean, I don't think anybody will be surprised if this bike doesn't make it. I am not a light rider. Um, I'm gonna give it effort and try and make it up the hill and 
And uh, maybe I'll try and catch my breath at the top if it doesn't make it on motor power alone. Um, it is a powerful motor, but I don't know if it's powerful enough to make it up a hill. That is, that is not what this bike is intended for, at least not without some assistance. So we will put the specs for the hill on the screen now. Uh, I'm gonna try and be in pedal assist level five before we get to the hill. So I'll start off in one now here to get started. Again, I cannot comment on how sensitive that Caden sensor is, I, or I can't say it enough. It is a very sensitive sensor, which is very nice, especially on a single speed, because the you don't have a chance to change the gearing to something a little easier to get started. So, all right, here we go. Nice, good, easy cruising speed. So there's a little bit of a downhill here uh, to those two marked signs there, because that's a little bit of a narrow bridge. And then after that, it is uphill. So I'll leave it in pedal assist level one. And uh, before the steep part of the hill, I'd like to see if I can get all the way up to pedal assist level five. So here we are, pedal assist level one. Again, no gears, single speed, belt drive. 19,000 miles of potential maintenance free riding. Okay, a little, a little firm here. Let me go ahead and kick up the pedal assist. That was a lot of effort I was applying. I'm barely moving. Come up the hill about nine, still providing a lot of effort. Uh, pedal assist level two, like I said. So here, kick it up. Pedal assist level three now. Still doing about 10. The hill's gonna taper off here. I'm gonna kick it up to level four before that does. There we go, okay, I can feel the motor kick up a little bit more there. There we are. So I'm trying to keep the same cadence, but it may be a little tough. I'm gonna see what it'll do up this hill. All right, here we go, we're gonna kick it up to Pelsis level five. There we go. I'm gonna try and keep it going. Remember, 350 watt nominal, 500 watt peak. So not a large mo uh, not a large motor, but maybe it'll be capable of getting us up here. I'm providing a decent amount of effort here. So you live in a place that has maybe one or two large kills and you like exercise, this is the bike for you. Uh, there we go. Again, no throttle. So this is the only time you're gonna be able to see it go up the hill because there's no way for me to retest it going up on throttle alone. Uh, all right, eight, seven. I mean, I providing consistent power on the down pushes. Yeah, a little, little out of breath there getting top of the hill, but if you wanted a bike that's gonna complement your riding and still give you a good workout, this is it. As well as if you need a light bike, this is gonna be an option for you. So still shows we have a 100% battery even after that amount of output. It's pretty impressive. Whew. All right, let me catch my breath for one second. <sighs> yeah, steep hill. Again, I was providing a lot of effort out of all the e-bikes that we've tested. This is definitely gonna be the one that we knew was gonna take a lot of effort to get up being a single speed and kind of a smaller motor. All right, that pretty much wraps up all of the riding and walk around footage of the Ride One Up Roadster V2 Gravel Edition. Let's go ahead and throw it to myself where I'll give you my concluding thoughts as well as pay attention to the third person riding footage so you can see what me, a five foot eight with 29 inch inseam rider looks like on this large frame. Let's get to it. The Roadster V2 has been one of the core e-bikes for Ride One Up during the last couple of years. It sports a sleek, stealthy road bike design that features name brand proven components at an affordable price. Ride One Up is known to us for stretching the customer's dollar as far as they can. This sometimes comes at the cost of needing a bit more assembly upon delivery, but means their bikes always have well thought out designs and quality parts to suit. About the price though, you can currently get the non-throttle gravel edition seen here for $11.45. Plus we have a special code and you can get an additional $45 off, making it even harder to pass up. There's also a gravel edition with throttle available for $13.45 but given the price and the overall specs of the Roadster, I'd recommend you take a second look at the non-throttle edition. But why a gravel edition? It seems like it's such a niche market for an e-bike. Ride One Up might be onto something. Gravel riding has been one of the fastest growing segments in biking for the last three years. Not to mention, if you try and find an affordable gravel bike, you'll quickly find yourself looking at e-bikes that cost three to five times what the gravel edition does. The base Roadster V2 is designed for people looking to make city style commutes or running short errands and trying to get a bit of a workout. The Gravel Edition takes that basis of thought and expands upon it to allow riders on more than just paved surfaces. The base Roadster sports traditional Kenda road bike tires and Tektro rim brakes. While the Gravel Edition not only upgrades the tires to much knobbier and wider WTB or Continental tires, 
the brakes are also upgraded to Textro Aries mechanical disc brakes. These changes not only allow for a more capable e-bike, but in my opinion, a more visually appealing e-bike that, thanks to the tires, provides a more stable and comfortable ride. The appearance of the gravel edition is not customizable as it is only available in gravel gray paint fitting while the base roadster is available in three colors, burgundy, silver, and black, all of which have a matte finish. One thing both models do have in common though, is that they are both available in two frame sizes, small and large. The small has a height range of five foot three to five foot eight, while the large has a range of five foot eight to six foot three. I found the large frame to fit me a five foot eight rider with 29 inch inseam pretty well, but I would be interested to try out the smaller frame size to see if I maybe could be a bit more comfortable while standing over it. Now, the elephant in the room about the Z-Bike has to be the single speed drivetrain. The base Roadster V2 is fitted with a single belt drivetrain system from Top Trans, while the Gravel Edition has been upgraded to a Gates carbon belt drive with easier gearing. But even with those changes, there were times, hills in particular, that I had to exert a decent bit of effort to get up even in pedal assist level five. This is in part due to the smaller 36 volt electrical system and the 350 watt nominal 500 watt peak motor, which both the base roadster and gravel edition utilize. When riding around on flat ground though, the motor and drivetrain were a bit more capable, carrying me a 225 pound rider well into the 20 plus mile per hour range. So I think it's worth evaluating your terrain and riding environment prior to purchasing this e-bike. Another point to consider about this e-bike is that it does have a smaller battery. All the roadsters come outfitted with an integrated Samsung celled seven amp hour battery. But with this bike lacks in battery size, it makes up for in stealth and weight. With that small of a battery, it is able to be tucked nicely into the down tube and almost disappear. As a commenter once said, the Roadster V2 is an electric e-bike that doesn't identify as an electric bike. And there's the other benefit, the low weight. The Roadster comes in at a mere 33 pounds, making it one of the lightest e-bikes that we've reviewed. That weight allows this e-bike to claim having a range of 20 to 30 miles, even with a 7 amp hour battery. If you're in need of a bit more range though, Ride One Up has you covered. For an additional $375, they make a seven amp hour battery that mounts to the seat tube. You obviously lose some of that sleek battery integration, but you'll get double the potential range. The Gravel Edition Roadster is not an e-bike for everyone, but thanks to Ride One Up's robust lineup, we can almost guarantee that they have an e-bike for you. If you're looking for something more accessible, but sports the same style, might we recommend the Tourist Step Through? Or if you're looking for something to crush those hills, the Rev One is definitely worth a look. We appreciate if you found this review helpful to use the links down in the description prior to purchase. Anything purchased after clicking helps support us here at eBike Escape and thank you. Be sure to tell us in the comments what you think of the Roadster V2 Gravel Edition and are there any other gravel e-bikes that you'd like to see us review? Also, be sure to check out our new eBike Escape store where we have an assortment of e-bike accessories that we trust and use almost daily. And everyone out there, remember, ride safe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.